of the uh, college will be signing the certificates. Uh, this is something that we all can go through. We can all walk through. This will be a course that, as we observe it, uh, would also be available to the CSSs. We're going to try to do the best we can to uh, make sure that this chaplain support team concept follows through the thread, and, and we will do our very best to make sure that both the, uh, the chaplain and the chaplain support specialist can be available to this and benefit from this type of education. And we will pull in some of the materials that they're doing with their religious support specialists, uh, understanding that some of it may be different than what uh, we would be able to do, but the, uh, and that, the concept of confidentiality, that is something we're, all, we're gonna have to be uh, working together to walk through. Uh, but I want you to understand we are aware of those things, and those are things that we're going to be talking about and trying to work through. We are at the very early stages of this, so you need to understand that as well. This isn't going to happen tomorrow. It is going to happen, uh, and if we could push the button on it tomorrow, we would, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of work and a little bit of time to make this happen. However, uh, we have Chaplain Tillery, who is going to be our director, and he is going to be able to make this thing work just as smooth as silk, because uh, part of his background, he's retired Air Force chaplain, but not only was he an Air Force chaplain, but he has taught in the Air Force Chaplain Corps College, both at Fort Jackson and at Maxwell Air Force Base, and he is well known to the folk there in the Chaplain Corps College, and we have got a director of our auxiliary chaplain corps program who is going to be able to help us uh, bridge that gap between us and tie the materials together. He, he is uh, keenly and uh, expertly qualified to lead us in this arena. And I am so thankful that he has said yes and that he is part of our core. And I am working uh, I'm looking forward to working with him, as well as with Chaplain Minor, getting this pulled together, and then uh, being able to put that out to uh, you as our chaplains and chaplain corps, um, chaplain support specialists as a team moving forward. So that's the vision. That's what we're looking to do. That's where we're headed. And obviously, we'll take questions, but please don't be discouraged when you get to the questions if we have to say, Great question, it's being developed. I don't have that answer yet, but I will. And we won't forget to get that to you. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what we're looking at. And I'm glad that Chaplain Tillery uh, is able to be with us. And, and John, it's good to see you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Appreciate well, John, it very much. Chap Chaplain Tillery, why don't you give us a little bit about, you wrote out a vision statement, just to kind of summarize the vision for this auxiliary chaplain uh, course that, uh, and uh, what you see. Well, the first thing, uh, thank you, Chapman Murdoch, Chapman Minor. Very honored to be here, to be uh, even related back to the schoolhouse is a wonderful thing. Uh, two years in South uh, Carolina, two years in uh, Alabama, a uh, wonderful time in my career. So anything that I say really is going to be uh, temporal and provisional, as Chap Murdoch said, this is all in development. But, but when I think of the Auxiliary Chaplain Corps College, what I think is that it's designed to prepare uh, graduates to operate seamlessly in the United States Air Force, uh, conducting designated ministries, right? The, the ministries that they ask us to do um, uh, the Air Force and uh, I would imagine also the, the Veterans Administration. And so uh, there's a number of things that, that go with that. I mean, we want to do that by uh, providing um, chaplains and, and I'm not sure where this will go with the, uh, the chaplain support uh, personnel. Uh, a lot of this stuff overlaps. It did in the schoolhouse. I, I'm sure it here will hear as well. But uh, whoever's a part, they're going to be trained, they're going to be equipped, uh, they're going to be creative, and they're going to be collaborative. And the thing that will hold all this together 
is the the values that we have our, our core values integrity volunteer service excellence and uh, respect if i could uh just take a another a minute to say a couple of uh, things about that a little more specifically and again uh, I don't want to caveat it out of existence but it is it is provisional but we want to be able to function as auxiliary chaplains in the United States Air Force where they want us to we want to be trained to active duty standards um, in selected tasks we want to be acquainted with the organizational uh, uh, and and function of the Air Force itself. Uh, we need to understand ministry in a diverse environment. You heard Chaplain uh, Scheich talk about that, our respect, which is a tremendous thing for, uh, for leadership. We want to be able to function in an inter-religious and interdenominational uh, environment with, with conviction and with grace and with humility. And finally, uh, a little more mundane, but oh, so important. Uh, we want to learn a little bit about how communications, written communications, uh, works in the Air Force, um, writing and that sort of thing. Now, I don't know uh, exactly what that coursework would look like, but those are some of the things that 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 I envision. That's great, thank you. And I, I'd like to add uh, now my thoughts, uh, and, and the only reason I do that is is because in, in talking to uh, Chaplain Newton, he's allowing us to go forward with this, but you heard where it happens for them. It happens in the middle of officer training program. He's really counting on us to step up and provide that military foundation that we can overlay this professional training. And, um, uh, and as uh, Chaplain Tillery's assistant, and I'll call myself a deputy for military instruction, because they're gonna glom into my background as a cadet for four years at the Air Force Academy, a professor for four, for four years at the Air Force Academy, a flight instructor at the Air Force Academy, many years dealing with how to provide instruction for future military officers and that was all part of part of the training that's going to have to go hand in hand with knowing how to do uh, to, uh, how to do uh, basic ministry skills how to work in a chapel we're going to have to be able to as chaplain tillery says be seamless i believe in our military conduct and and add that skill set to the ministry skills, whether we're a chaplain support specialist or a uh, civil air patrol chaplain. We have to bring a sense of credibility. With that in mind, I have a couple of slides, if you don't mind, Chaplain Tillery, that I'd like to bring forward here, because we're going to learn a new word that we don't use very often in the civil air patrol, and that's the word ethos. And I'm going to depend on every uh, other members of the uh, uh, of the uh, chaplain corps uh, being with me to uh, uh, to make this. Uh, let me close that. Let me get that back. Well, all right. Let's uh, go to slideshow from the beginning. Thank you. All right. Ethos. We're going to move forward very quickly. What is ethos? Why do we need an ethos in the Civil Air Patrol Chaplain Corps? What steps should we take to create an ethos in the Corps? And uh, what other examples are there? Uh, before I continue, I'm gonna stop sharing because I have a poll, yay for polls. If you can see this, answer a question. Okay. 
Well, so far only 109 out of 129 have voted. So, up oh, there we go. There's more. And by the way, this question is anonymous. So if you want to put something else, this is an, one of the anonymous questions. It's not used for, for taking attendance or anything like that. This is a total, everything that we're talking about is off the record. Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and stop the polling. Let's share the results. 105 strongly agreed, 11 somewhat agreed, and the rest, uh, nobody else answered lower than that. I think that's kind of good. I think, Chaplain Murdoch, that's very good, actually, mm -hmm. that we have a, a core that's proud to be part of the core. Amen. Yes. And I would agree. Very good. Well, uh, getting back then, the reason I asked for uh, asked that question is because that's the beginning of a sense of ethos. And, uh, and let me get back here to share. Again, back from the beginning. All right, so we're going to talk about other initiatives as well. Ethos. It's the characteristic spirit of a culture manifested in its beliefs and aspirations. This is the beginning about being a military officer. And the Air Force finally started to use this term in 2007, calling it a warrior ethos, but it didn't refer to necessarily to those who pulled, gun, pulled the trigger of guns or shot bullets or missiles from or uh, launched rockets or, or, or uh, ballist, intercontinental ballistic missiles or anything like that. It was any engaged aggressive activity uh, that was the, uh, that somebody really put their minds to and really put their set of beliefs and, and supported an institution. The distinguishing character, sentiment, moral nature or guiding beliefs of a person or institution. It's kind of a complicated thing. So I'm gonna to turn to the Canadian military ethos. How do military professionals view themselves, their identity? Remember that pillar of family, number one thing was identity. How do they fulfill their function? That's expertise, that's what Chaplain Newton was talking about. And how do they relate to their government and to their society? And I would also suggest, how do they relate to each other? Another use for the word ethos, uh, along with pathos and lo uh, logos, is the rhetorical triangle of persuasion. It essentially means to create credibility. And that's really the simplest definition that I wanted to, us to get to. How are we going to create credibility for the Civil Air Patrol Chaplain Corps, both chaplains and chaplain support specialists going forward? How do we create credibility as a military chaplaincy and a military chaplain team going forward? So now the question becomes, why do we need ethnic credibility? And uh, uh, <coughs> why do we need an ethos? Now, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second here and bring up uh, the participants again. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Okay, so um, what I'd like to suggest is that we kind of have a, an open mic here. So in the chat room, if you, if you have an idea about why we should create credibility or ways that you think we could create credibility, what do you think they are? Put your, put, put your name down there in the chat room and I'll call you out to speak. Somebody else? All right, Jessica, why don't you uh, be first, please, ma'am. Thank you, Chaplain. I think it's really about building trust, credibility um, in the job of the Chaplain Corps and the job of the CDI CSS. Our job is to be trusted by others to do our jobs properly, to be confidential when needed, um, and to be someone that our members can trust. 
Great, thank you. Major Kirk, what do you, what's on your mind, ma'am? Uh, Major Kirk? Okay. How about, uh, let's, let's go. It's about being real. All right. Chaplain Williams, what's on your mind, sir? We need to be professional. We need to act professional, look professional. Uh, we need to be present. We need to be there for more than just character development or more than just the things that we're involved with. Great. That's great. All right. How about... Um, who is admin? I don't know. I, we have a name admin here that keeps coming up. What do you what what uh, what is that about? Uh, what do you think, sir? Well, how about uh, Jamie? No. Huh? All righty. Well, I just wanted sir, to. Can I make? Can I say something? Sure. I don't. Ahead, I don't know how to. I don't know how to get my name. So it says to everyone because I don't know how to do the name, Ben. I, I'm still bad. But um, oh, how, what I feel about it is um, in order for us to do our job, it is essential that, like that young lady said, we have trust because we cannot do our job. We cannot help and serve others, not just God. We always serve God every single day in our personal lives. But we can't serve others if people don't trust us. If our cadets don't trust me when we talk about the pillars and suicide prevention, I've accomplished nothing. So if the Air Force doesn't trust us, they're sure not gonna help us and they're not gonna they're not collaborate gonna and train. Yes, Hello? thank you. Yes. Hello? Captain Coles, go ahead. Hello? Yes. Hi, sorry about that. Um, it's that we are a visible reminder of the holy and um, the credibility is that when people see us, um, some of us, it may be the only um, God that they may see. It may be the only witness that they may see. And so um, that's why it's important that we carry ourselves um, in a credible way. That's very good. We have not only a military credibility and institutional credibility, but we maintain, we also have a responsibility to our religious institutions that we represent as well to be good representatives of them. Great. Uh, Chaplain Knight, you have something to say, sir? Yes, I do. Having been in the Air Force a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away, uh, how we hold ourselves, how we carry ourselves, the idea of esprit de corps, of professionalism, and people, we should, as promoters of the core values, we should promote excellence in everything we do, and that includes how we wear our uniforms, how we relate to others, not only in Civil Air Patrol, but in the military as well. And... Uh, we need to do that, otherwise they don't take us seriously. Sir, can I make one more other comment? I, I live in an area without saying where I live, but anyhow, I live in an area where there's not a huge amount of Afro-Americans in our Civil Air Patrol, and we actually haven't had any until, I would say within the past six months. Um, and it, it was kind of weird and hard for them to integrate. And um, one of the things about it is, and we had Afro-Americans, we had our first, I think they were Hindu and Muslim, I'm not really sure when they, they wear the, um, oh geez, oh geez, um, the headgear, you know, the turban. I don't know what you call it. I know what I'm trying to say. Anyhow, that was really uh, a little bit hard for some of the cadets. But um, what helped is I felt like I treated them like everyone else. I called on them like everyone else. Um, I, I treated them no different, because they're not different. And I think that showed the cadets 
that I wasn't going to tolerate them treating those cadets any different. And that one of the things they're going to have to do in the outside world, if they ever leave my area, and even if they don't leave my area, they're going to have to work with people of all faith, of all colors, and, you know, pe people that are purple and polka dotted. And they just have to learn to deal with it because that's what life is about. And we want them to understand that. We don't want them to live in a bubble. That's well said. And next week, <laughs> I'm sorry, in two days, we talk about diversity and the importance of diversity. But thank you for bringing that up. That certainly shows excellence and our commitment of respect and our core value. Captain Minor. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this might be a, a good uh, idea to put into our curricula, uh, just as they do at the, at the uh, schoolhouse, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a course for all of us, including our chaplain, court, our chaplain support specialists on the various religions, the different things, how to, how to pronounce and how to uh, recognize various garb of the different faiths so that our, our personnel are respectful and able to interact with people of other faiths because we've been training them to, to recognize some of those specifics. And, That's a and great. Sir, does, I'm sorry, does the commanders have any type of different, I don't know, I'm not a commander. In the commander courses, do they have any type of diversity and a little brief um, snapshot of different religions, at least the major ones? I, I believe that when that, when they have their chat, their commander course, uh, they have a briefing from the chaplain corps. And I believe that's where some of that would come in. And that would probably, I would have to talk with General Smith and see what the curricula is for the commander's course and see how we could help with that. And sir, I would suggest that next in two days that we ask uh, Lieutenant Colonel Cito, the National Diversity Officer mm -hmm. and our own uh, uh, Chaplain Grossman, who will be giving us briefings on uh, diversity and, and religious freedom and religious diversity in Civil Air Patrol, that very question. In fact, we'll talk about that in two days, as well as a lesson on religious accommodation of uniforms. So we'll learn the entire right. process in two days. I'd like to go ahead and continue on with the, with the slides for just a few minutes because there is some interaction later on here in just a, just a second. So let's... Um, some great, uh, uh, some great slides. So um, let me move us forward here. Now, let me ask, uh, uh, we're gonna ask, I think we've, uh, how, do, how do we show our credibility? We've already uh, uh, done that. But I wanna ask uh, one more polling question now that I think about it. Let me stop my share. One last poll, and let's uh, go to another poll question. Okay. 107 out of 126 answered. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll, share the results. I must confess, I'm surprised that that many folks have actually done that in their, in their career. But uh, the idea is that, uh, stop to share the poll results. But I do want to uh, uh, move forward with this idea. For those who have not one of the beginning parts of ethos, one of the very most important things we can do is actually make our commitment known that we're going to do this. And I would suggest to you that, um, that we do it uh, this way. 
if you have not said the oath of office, I'm going to ask that you unmute mute your mic. And even if you have said it and you're willing to, to do it again and you would like to do it, we're going to slightly change it to make this an appointment oath. And Chaplain Murdoch is going to offer those who want to take it to unmute your mic. I'm going to be doing it because in my years in Civil Air Patrol, I've never done this. And I'd like to uh, raise my hand and I'd like to, to take this oath of office as well. So everybody, unmute your mic, but keep quiet, please. Quiet, please. Chaplain Murdoch, if you'll lead us, please. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I and your name. Michael J. Barton. Having been appointed to the chapter for. Have been appointed to the chapter for. And by everyone. I swear. Everybody support and comply. Solemnly swear. The laws of the regulation. This obligation freely without any mental. Preservation. Discharge all duties and responsibilities. So obey the orders of the officers. The regulations. The regulations. Discharge all duties and responsibilities. Obey the orders of the officers. Or no according to regulations. All right, that was a great trial run. That was well. <laughs> Everybody's supposed to repeat after Chaplain Murdoch. What I'm going to ask you to do, Chaplain Minor, uh, hey. let's take the oath of office off of the hey. screen, please. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, what we would like to do is I will give breaks, and you call, you follow after what I state. And we will work our way through this together. All right. All right. Raise your hand. <clears throat> and here we are. I quote your name. I name the third. Having been appointed. Having been appointed. Been appointed. To the chaplain corps. To the chaplain, chaplain corps. Of the Civil Air Patrol. Of the Civil Air Patrol. Solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm. Affirm. I will support and comply with. I will support and comply with. The Constitution, bylaws, regulations. Constitution and regulations. Regulations. Of the Civil Air Patrol. Of the Civil Air Patrol. That I take this obligation freely. That I take, take, take this obligation, obligation freely. 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 Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Mental reservation. Mental reservation. reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose, For purpose of, of evasion. evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. And faithfully. Discharge okay. all duties and responsibilities. Discharge all, all duties and, and, and responsibilities. responsibilities. As well as obey. As, as well, well as, as obey. obey. Orders of the officers. Orders, orders of the officers. officers. Pointed over me. Pointed, Pointed over, over, me. Over, over, me. over me. Over me. According to regulations. According, According to regulations. To regulations. regulations. Congratulations. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, everybody mute your microphone again, please. Yes. <laughs> everybody mute your mic, please. Great. All right, in the feedback section, you can tell us how you felt during that. The idea was to create a sense of a common ritual. And one of the things, I don't know, Chaplain Murdoch, you want to tell them what, you, uh, what your idea is with this? Well, my idea is that at some point, uh, once a chaplain or a CDI is appointed, I believe if I could just come on uh, online with that person, maybe at their squadron meeting and give them the oath of office, 
while they stand there in front of their squadron uh, and make that one of the first things that happens uh, once they become a chaplain or a chaplain support specialist uh, with Civil Air Patrol to try and make them understand and help everyone else understand that we are not only a family, but we are a core and we are together impacting the lives of our cadets and seniors. So I'd like to see something like that happen. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, uh, <coughs> there'll be a lot of opportunities using uh, the Zoom technology moving forward. Let's uh, quickly go back uh, just to finish up a couple more ideas about, uh, about ethos. And uh, one of the other things we have, of course, is a code of ethics now. In 80-1, this is the draft of the Code of Ethics. <coughs> and you're gonna, you have a copy of the draft of 80-1 in the Moodle under uh, uh, a Chaplain Hughes's presentation when he talked about this draft. It's the very last thing in the whole document. And I really would like you to go back there and look at this because attachment six, section A is the general provision, section B is a covenant. Section C is the code of ethics. You've just raised your hand and you have just sworn you're going to follow this code of ethics because it is part of the regulations you just swore that you were going to follow. Section D, what happens if you violate it? Remember when Chaplain Newton talked about the importance of, of having standards and having our own enforcement? Well, this is it. When we violate our code of ethics, the, there is and there is a penalty and there is a process. So it's really, really important, I think, uh, that you understand these things which bring us together, these common elements. Finally, ethics and communication, as Chaplain Tillery talked about, and that is your written assignment for this course. It is now posted in Moodle. Tomorrow afternoon by noon, there will be an example of what you're going to write but your, <clears throat> your requirement is to write a military subject to formatted CAP letter. As I said, I will post it by noon tomorrow to me asking for you, for, uh, asking for you to graduate on 30 July, 2020. You will use the correct format and the correct signature block, the formal signature block where your name will be in all capitalization and it will be done correctly. You will not have the extraneous things of degrees or certifications. It is your chaplain status and your rank are the only things that need appear in a proper signature block. And as I said, it will be demonstrated to you. It needs to be sent to me via your own cap.gov email address. Now, there are some wings out there who are not using cap.gov. That's okay, I'll accept that. I would prefer you to have a cap.gov address, especially if you're going to inter, uh, react uh, and inter, interface with military folks. Having a cap.gov address uh, certainly adds credibility that we are a government uh, supporting chartered entity. So if you do not have that, you can get it from me as the administrator of the hc.cap.gov email address. You just email me telling, you, uh, telling me you need a, um, an hc.cap.gov uh, email address and I will send it to you. Uh, you can, after you use it for this class project, you can forward all your email from this address to your other addresses that you normally use. But it is important to have in your toolkit, an appropriate Civil Air Patrol government-based address, not AOL, not Gmail, not anything else. Have your own CAP address to use when you need and you rise up to leadership and you need to interface. And there'll be examples of the correct signature block for writing in an email. So as I said, all of this will be posted on Moodle tomorrow and your deadline to send this letter to me via this cap.gov is a week from tomorrow by 1800 Eastern, Eastern Daylight Time on Wednesday, 29 July. Excellence in communication is just the very beginning. We write in a common language. We speak uh, 
using uh, common terms. And part of the chat, uh, part of the auxiliary Chapman course is to give us <coughs> why we need uh, the ability to talk and uh, be able to speak the same language as our active duty and other total force component counterparts. So that ends my short presentation on ethos. Now, so what do you think? Is it, was it taking the oath worthwhile? Did you, did you feel something that you were joining something bigger than yourself? Um, so I think it's important that add your comments and the feedback about this. Do you think it's worthwhile standing up next to brand new CDIs or brand new chaplains and have them repeat this oath of office in front of their squadron and uh, commit? Um, let us know what you think about all of this uh, going forward here. Chaplain Tillery, I'm gonna turn the microphone back to you, sir, and, and any thoughts you might have. The ethos, the warrior ethos that they brought in uh, in, in uh, 2005 or six or seven was a, a wonderful, a wonderful thing because it, like you said, it wasn't just the trigger pullers. It was uh, everyone. It was a matter of being able to overcome adversity with resilience and strength and to be able to encourage those alongside of you. Uh, it was a difficult time uh, during that period of time as it is now with, uh, with COVID. Uh, from ethos, I'd like to say one little thing about uh, professionalism. You know, obviously you have, you know, that was those, the three, the three um, things. You have to have the competence, you have to have the skill, the, the expertise, right? And you have to have the place for that. The thing where uh, all of that comes together with, um, with the Civil Air Patrol, I think is in the area of respect. That has to do with character and respect. Uh, which uh, Chaplain Scheich mentioned, uh, respect is a core value that we have, uh, respect for spiritual values. These things are so important. He used the word religion and he broke it down. I want to break the word respect down. Uh, respect, again, more at, or to do again, spect. If you've got some glasses on, you got spectacles, right? If you go to watch uh, something, uh, you're a spectator. Uh, in the military, we had inspections all the time. It means to see. So literally when you respect somebody, it means that you look again. It's more at looking. In other words, what you do is you do not render them invisible. And that is the most important thing because it is so, that's a definition of disrespect is to render someone else invisible in your eyes but you see them for who they are. It's so important. I think that's the cornerstone for uh, professionalism. And, uh, and it's such an important thing for all of us to be respectful for, uh, towards the institution, the Civil Air Patrol, towards the Air Force, towards one another, um, and towards ourselves. Thank you so very much. Chaplain Murdoch, we've kind of come to the end of this time. Uh, uh, I'll turn the gavel back to you. We have eight minutes left. You, It's your call. What we do with that eight minutes, sir? Excuse me, sir. May I answer oh, one Jeff, question? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Were there questions or thoughts that you have there, sir? Uh, well, I had a couple of people in uh, chat say, oh, I don't. I was part of Great Lakes region. I do not have access to Moodle. Uh, number one, this whole college is based around having learning management systems. So if you are Great Lakes region and need Moodle access, email me and I will get it set up immediately. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it. Very good. Thank you. Chaplain Murdoch. All right. Thank you very much. Well, everyone, it's been an, another wonderful uh, time together. Uh